very pleased to present one of our keynote speakers for the year two project showcase. That is uh, Kui Fan Chen, Stanley Chen. Uh, ever since we began this sequence of, re this, of this research program at Stroka, first the new normal and now the terraforming, we've tried to develop a vernacular, uh, if you like, uh, for design research that seems speculative and uh, experimental, but is, if so, it is because it is in fact so focused on what are often super hyper pragmatic framings of problems. It's a, rela a relationship to the real rather than the imaginary that drives uh, this drives this work. But it is also, and perhaps exactly, exactly for this reason, it draws a deep affinity uh, with science fiction literature, or some of at least. Those affinities, uh, I think, have to do with two, two things, more or less. Um, first is the, uh, what Stanislaw Lem calls the epistemological counterfactual, uh, as in his theory of sci-fi. That is, it's not the simple what if, um, but, what, but rather than not at all simple, uh, what if it already is? Uh, as well as a, a, the pedagogy of alienation that comes with this uh, from the uh, narcissism of the bourgeois novel uh, and from its multiple insufferable protagonists as a way to architect the question of uh, not just the narrative, but what is narrated. Second, and uh, related to this, I think, is the construction of narrative worlds based not from self-psychologizing heroes and companions, uh, but around the physical material worlds in which those people happen to be located. The science part of the science fiction is thus not just the form, uh, is in the form, not just in the content. Science fiction is a form of fictionalization, not a fictionalization in which science is a topic. As many of you are well aware, follow our program, over the past decade, um, uh, the center of gravity in the center, the center of gravity in the world of sci-fi literature uh, has shifted. Uh, and one of the ways that it shifted is toward China. Beyond Xixin Liu and the three body problem, uh, China boasts an extremely deep bench of talented writers and thinkers. And our next speaker is amongst the brightest of the bright. His book, Waste Tide, uh, was among my favorites and, our, and was on our program reading list. Um, he has a new book coming out uh, shortly, co-authored with Kai Fu Lee, but yes, that Kai Fu Lee, called AI 2141, uh, 2041, 10 Visions for Our Future. Um, I've had a chance to read a pre-release copy uh, of it. It's a rather interesting mix of takes on the future of AI in China in particular. And so um, China and its visions of the future is the topic of Stanley's talk, but it is not from that book, but rather for some relatively new research um, that he's been doing on much older traditions of visionary thought and practice, particularly those from Western China, a different mode of futurism uh, for a different mode of future. With that, uh, very happy to present uh, my friend, Stanley Chen. Hi, I'm Stanley Chen Chiu-Fan. It's my great pleasure to be uh, part of the Stroka Institute on this transforming uh, program. So thanks for having me here. Today, I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, my journey um, since last year. So after and during the pandemic. So I believe everything had changed a lot for everyone. So there's something happened to me uh, personally as well during my writing and during my um, traveling because we are uh, restricted to travel overseas. So there's, uh, there was a lot of opportunity for me to explore a little bit further uh, in some exotic places in China and also trigger my interest on shamanism and also what's the relationship between the shamanism and also modern uh, contemporary art and 
the narrative of China nowadays as a tech uh, technocracy country. Now China has the, uh, I, I think it's the most advanced tracking system and uh, number numbers like billions of smart camera and also this kind of big data and also the 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 ai is so uh gaining a lot of interest from the capital and also being accepted very well by the audience by the mass audience so i have to say this this is the the era of uh technology acceleration in china so I'm going to share my screen because there's so many interesting pictures I've taken by myself uh, from last year and this year. And I believe this might trigger more interesting question uh, since, since then. So this is, here we go. So my title will be Reimagining Wu. Wu actually is the Chinese character represent for shaman. So uh, there's another title is the Renaissance of Shamanism in Technocracy China. So as we all know, uh, everything was put to a stop since last year. And I got some chance to visit some very exotic uh, minority um, places uh, in the mountain and on the on the uh, open field so to do some few study on shamanism because some of my in in uh, encounter with uh, shaman by myself so this is the first trip uh, in inner mongolia so actually i was brought by one of my friend who used to be a musician and she was born in Inner Mongolia, but she couldn't speak uh, Mongolian because she, she was raised in Beijing, the mega city and also the capital. And since four years ago, she started to have this kind of, we call it uh, shaman uh, disease. She start to have uh, strange dreams and she feel unwell and the doctor from the hospital couldn't tell what's going on there. So that goes to very traditional uh, ritual of how to becoming a shaman. She gonna find a guru and back to her hometown and finding her resources uh, for, for settling so and, and locating her position in the cosmos and so to speak, she gonna find her mission in the world. So I went with her in, uh, into this very exotic place called Hailar. It was actually at the boundary of China, Mongolia, and also Russian. So there I met her guru, actually the girl who was born in 1988. So she used to be a singer, but now she's a very professional shaman and doing all this kind of ritual to the local people and blessing uh, to the death, curing people and also foretelling the weather and if the and to keep the balance of the human activity together with the ecosystem. So I went inside the mountain together with them. You can see at the down right, that's the ritual for the holy mountain. So every year the thousand of inner Mongolia people They'll have this kind of huge gala and festival there. And to celebrate this kind of uh, human nature. So I got to learn like uh, this kind of return of shamanism actually was begin uh, since 10 years ago because the invasion of modern uh, technology and also the industrial uh, exploitation of the nature, the mining, everything, it make the uh, nature, the environment became worse and worse. The climate change became extreme. So the shaman came back instead of, there are actually a lot of um, lama 
like Buddhist Lama uh, coexist in the same area. But I think there's certainly special meaning as shamanism is so important as a medium to connect the nature with the human activity and also to build up this kind of consensus that they need to keep the balance. So that's the very beginning of everything. I start to check into uh, all the uh, related uh, events happen all around China. So there's something here, I put it in Yunnan in the Dali mountainous areas. So I went on climbing the mountain with some Polish shaman. Actually, she he is doing some um, very interesting anthropology research in the field. And also in the middle, this is a fire celebration in Jiangsu Wuxi. So you see a lot of people around it. They are singing some uh, uh, trauma, they are, they, they are playing their drums, and also they have this kind of uh, mystical uh, 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 rituals. All of them, they are very, very young, they are mostly a millennium, and maybe some of them are uh, Gen Z. So they are very spiritual, but they also working and living in the big cities. But they will organize this kind of uh, shamanic uh, ritual, so to sending the message through the fire. That is the very traditional way in shamanism to celebrate, to blessing the world and every individual's uh, good fortune. And you can see on the very right side, there's uh, in Guizhou, some Dong minority. So the tower there is actually a a, a shamanic uh, a, a ritual place. So every year they will have special uh, festival there and they are kind of like a uh, 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 matrilineal uh, society. They are celebrate and then they will worship a grandmother called Sax. So it's called Sa. So they will have this kind of shaman who can keep their uh, cultural tradition and also they are, they are, uh, they are singing their drama, their, their way of uh, doing clothes and their way of living with the nature to continuously uh, uh, pres uh, uh, preserve because right now it's so uh, reformed by the modern uh, modern industry, so many uh, cables, electricity, and also the modern city lifestyle had invaded into this kind of minority village. So, as I can see, and I did interview uh, some of these shaman, uh, as you can see on the right upper upper right. So. Actually, they are quite knowledgeable and they can use their own language and characters to preserve all this uh, history and also their traditions, especially some secret knowledge and how they can inherit from one to another generation. So this helped me to think a lot why this kind of new train right now is start to emerge all around China and it's especially on those uh, uh, younger generation with well-educated background, but still they hold this kind of huge interesting interest on spiritualism, because as you might know, China is a pretty much materialistic uh, country. We believe in uh, Marxism, and it used to be a claim that all this kind of thing is superstitious and and Confucius didn't want to mention any of this ghost or god thing. That is one um, I would say is the very core value of Han uh, Han Zhu. So that's the dominant uh, nation right now in China. But now it seems like. Uh, there's so many 
um, uh, diversity happen here. And this is my relate to another big discovery or you can call it rediscovery of Sanxing Dui in Sichuan province, very close to Chengdu. So this is actually the second time they discovery a huge retro pits uh, around this area. And that's like the second time since 1986 because they dig out so many uh, incredible uh, bronze figures and also with gold mask and pies of elephant tusk. And this kind of bronze uh, figures they with wild bugging eyes and they can be uh, carbon dating uh, shows this uh, sacrificial pits were made 2000 years, even uh, 3000 years ago. So that is to say, um, we used to claim that only Shang dynasty exist in the uh, middle China, middle and middle uh, North China. So there was a claim to be the origin of Chinese. But now it seems that there are so many different civilizations coexist around the same period of time. So right now the country, the, uh, the government spend huge money to build up this, as you can see, most advanced technology and try to help this archeology span uh, discovery. So, uh, and also President Xi visit by himself and say, this is the, 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 the time we need to build some Chinese characteristic style and vibe on archeology. span So this is something I took in the museum very close by. This is all the stuff that they go uh, from last time. And you, as you can see, there's huge bronze standing uh, figure in the middle. Actually, he is the king. Meanwhile, he is the shaman of the society. And they actually review the whole ritual setting uh, on the left side. And, 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 and this is very typical shamanic uh, uh, ritual settings. And also the most interesting thing is the mask, the bronze mask on the right side, you can see the, the bugging eyes and there's one sticky uh, antler up above. So everyone, the experts are guessing why they put it in that way because it's so different from the ordinary uh, Chinese face, right? So some, people on the internet, they might guessing it's from alien, from outer space, but it's quite a big bold guess. But to me, it seems like it's quite resonate to the very fundamental concept of shaman because uh, the definition of shaman is someone who can uh, leverage the, uh, and they can get into the state of trance uh, consciously and they can connect to the spiritual level and uh, to the universe to the death to the nature to the animals etc so it seems to me this mask actually represents a man in the state of trance his eyes got different and he got this kind of uh, consciousness uh, altered state and and it was solidated into uh, uh, this kind of like uh, outfits. So this brings to me a very interesting idea that actually the, we are forming a new narrative of the origin of China that um, we are not a, a, a country with single origin, but just like sky full of stars. And it means uh, multi ancient kingdoms coexisted and competed for resources at the same time. So our ancestors actually live in a shared world, just like we do. But interestingly, all of these patterns can be found in other uh, 
uh, civilizations like Shang Dynasty and also Liangzhu Dynasty based in the uh, east coast of China is very close to where I stay right now is in Zhejiang province. So all of them, uh, it seems to me like represent the picture that we are a multi-origin but single identity shamanic nation and and that's something very uh make me excited because why we are right now revisit all the things why we're putting so many resources into this archaeology discovery because we need to build up some narrative and this narrative is about shamanism so also not only on archaeology but also in contemporary art like perf performance art and installation art and and digital arts you can see all this kind of uh, shamanic uh, themes is coming to emerge at the same time it become a new hit right now this is a show i went to in shanghai just not long ago the title is integrate is by a very famous contemporary artist dancer Shen Wei. So actually, he in, uh, he put all this kind of concept of shamanism, or also I Ching, and also like this kind of uh, 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 holistic uh, cosmic cosmic uh, uh, beings into these uh, settings. As you can see, there's like uh, 32 that uh, puppet who got a signal from um from the from the heaven from the cosmos and they start to uh be giving the life and they start to Act, they start to interact and they start to uh, um, dance and using the color painting on the floor, they start to paint something with their bodies. And you can see from the uh, lower picture that all of them, it seems to me, get into this kind of state of trance. And the whole performance is so intriguing and so 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 astonishing that gave me a lot of thought that's like uh, a lot of artists actually right now leveraging this kind of idea like shamanism to express how their thoughts reflect on the modern living and also the society and this is the most latest show which was hosted in MAP is called Museum Art of Pudong. Pudong actually is the most uh, advanced uh, district in Shanghai. So it's by Cai Guoqiang. The title is Encounter the Unknown. So actually Cai Guoqiang is the one who using firework as his language and tour to express her his uh, artistic uh, feelings. So he's also doing the very famous one for the two, two, 2008 Olympic game in Beijing. So as you can see here, like he really put into some very shamanic uh, description that we can commune with the spiritual with being open-minded and wholehearted. Actually, he used the term shaman to describe one of the very important uh, curator he used to work with in this show. So as you can see, he put in a lot of like uh, elements from planets to uh, nebula. Also there's Einstein and all this kind of technology devices into one setting and I think he trying to express this kind of coexistence in this uh, accelerating era. He tried to use the, his intuitive intuition with fire 
and color to communicate with another uh, uh, another state of mind and also the state of uh, uh, the human centric um, um, narrative. So as I mentioned earlier, fire actually is the channel, is the language that shaman used to communicate with the spiritual world. So Tsai Guo Qiang right now as the most, one of the most influential and important contemporary artists right now, it seems like he chose the same way as those shamans did in the ancient time to bring everyone, all his audience back into this uh, pre-modern status, which can directly connect to the cosmos. And so this is one more directly a claim that they are represent uh, this kind of shamanic uh, ritual with music, medicine, painting, and also some other performance arts. And they try to use this process to help every audience to become a semi shaman is called rituals in rituals of the future is supposed to happen in late june but on the very day of its uh its uh, its its agenda it was called to postpone because it's it was so close to the birthday of the ccp right that was july the first so they invited a lot of artists, writers, scientists to this ritual and try to bring everyone together to feel. As they mentioned in the in, uh, introduction, they say, right now we, we are lack of a ritual. A ritual can fit in the narrative of the myth nowadays. It can tell in it can tell the death and life, the history and the magnificent, the sacrifice, the sun and the wine and the future for sure. And science only one of the myth, knowledge, power, stock market, real estate and currency is another myth. Environment, key fits, racism and nationalism, internet, economy and big data, they are all part of the myth nowadays in China. And the mission of the artist is become an assistant to help every attendee to express their feeling of this problem in an artistic way. So this kind of ritual actually is all about us. It's about now, it's about here, it's about everyone. So I'm pretty looking forward to this ritual. It might happen in the very close future. And I really would love to see how everyone responds to this really shamanic uh, settings and the ceremony uh, afterward. But as you can see, if one thing was covered with science and technology is easily be accepted by the government and also by the mass. This is another exhibition, which actually is was created by me and another professor in Tsinghua University is called Sci-Fi Scene, just a mimic from Anthropocene. So it was hosted in the boiler of iron and steel in Beijing so you can see all this setting is quite, um, it's quite psychedelic, it's quite cyberpunkish, and but it also with a lot of uh, elements of spiritual Buddhism and transcendence. So we use science fiction as a jacket and to help people to try to understand more what's going on right now in this technocracy country and what we supposed to do to use our body, to use our sensories, to use our imagination, to connect 
to this bigger existence and to finding our own narrative about the future. So back to our topic as reimagine Wu. So I put it here like Wu, the character structure is pretty interesting. It's from the very beginning, it's just like a cross with very strong religious symbolic uh, concept. But later on, you'll find that it actually, it shows the meaning of connecting all the things like from the above, is the cosmos from downside is the planet and also there's two people or you can say is some kind of beings there so actually Wu, as shaman it means the medium of connecting all this planetary material information and beings and that is to say we need to reimagine shamanism in this technocracy uh, era. And you can see a lot of things being replaced by technology. For example, the, the rocket you can see is success be, su success, successfully launched earlier this year and helped to build up the new space nation in 2024. And also you can see from the left side, there is the very latest disaster happened in Henan province. It was show the, 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 the dark future of climate change. So what should we do? Just President Xi uh, just acclaimed that uh, green water and green mountain is golden mountain and silver mountains is being uh, rich and being prosper. So right now, ecological civilization was attempted to be the national strategy together with a carbon neutral um, goal in 2060. So I can see the whole country right now is swift, uh, switching our economic model uh, from the traditional pattern to the new one, more clean, more eco-friendly, and to more care about what's the balance between materialism and the spiritualism. But of course, because we have very strong tradition of materialism, so they, they might need more time to have this kind of turning. And also we have all this kind of narrative new narrative coming out, they are not necessary to directly connect to shamanism, but as I can see, there's uh, so many uh, renaissance and also uh, resonate to the spirit, which was represented by the word shamanism and also the, out, uh, the extension of shamanism for sure. So, I am pretty looking forward uh, and also um, pretty um, excited about what we can do using the storytelling, using this kind of uh, curation, exhibition, art show, we can engaging with people and actually we are one of the messengers, we are one of the mediums. We try to deliver this kind of message, which we totally believe it, it's correct because we have to be so cautiously to reimagine the whole uh, ecosystem, also economy uh, model of development uh, in the next decades because uh, pandemic is already a, a, a loud alarm to every one of us. So I think as an end, shamanism definitely could help us to achieve a more sustainable and eco-friendly and balancing future.
So that's only the beginning of my study and also my um, writing. So I'm looking forward to working and discuss with every one of you in Strelka Institute and see what we can do together. So thank you so much for taking your time listening to my talk and thank you so much again.